This is the G60 highway in China, spanning 2,300 kilometers and connecting Shanghai with the southern city of Kunming. But G60 is also the name of a new Chinese mega constellation project in low Earth orbit. And in this video, we're going to tell the story of how it came to see the day, how it's connected to a highway, and how it could shape China's future space landscape. But first, some context. The world is entering an era of mega constellations. The number of satellites in orbit has skyrocketed over the past five years, and this figure is expected to grow exponentially in the coming decade. Two players are leading the way, Starlink, a US-based constellation by SpaceX, and OneWeb, a British constellation with strong ramifications in the US, continental Europe, and India. New entrants are also coming in with Blue Origin's Kuiper, Telesat's Lightspeed, and Europe's Iris Square. And of course, there's China. Until recently, China's mega constellation projects were understood to be contained within one single mega project, the Guowang constellation, also called Xinguang. At a high level, this constellation is relatively well known. Guowang will be operated by a newly established state owned enterprise called China SatNet. It will be composed of up to 13,000 satellites and the first full-fledged satellite should be launched by the end of this year. Now, that's all good, and we have a full episode on this constellation, but what's new here, however, is that there's a second Chinese mega constellation entering the game called G60 Xinglian, or in English, G60 Starlink. And this is where things get interesting. Let's first delve on the origin of the name. As mentioned, G60 is the name of the Chinese highway connecting Shanghai and Kunming. At the beginning of this highway, there's the Yangtze River Delta, one of the most economically developed areas in China, and concentrating many of the country's high-tech industries. The story of the G60 begins in 2016 in Songjiang, one of the most remote districts in Shanghai and one which was scheduled to be developed. That year, the Songjiang government put forward the concept of, quote unquote, a G60 science and technology innovation corridor, where high-tech science and technology industries were to be set up alongside the G60 highway, which goes through Songjiang. In the following year, Songjiang was joined in this initiative by the neighboring cities of Hangzhou and Jiaxing, which were also attracted by the concept. And finally, in 2018, Suzhou, Huzhou, Jinhua, Hefei, Uhu, and Xuancheng cities became part of what is now a nine-city high-tech alliance in the Yangtze River Delta. At this point, we're talking about the establishment of a science and technology cluster, so nothing out of the ordinary. But there's a space angle to all of this. Shanghai concentrates a significant part of China's satellite manufacturing capability, something that this so-called G60 innovation corridor could benefit from. We're talking major players, such as the Shanghai Academy of Space Technology or Shanghai Microsat. And you have to combine all of this with the fact that satellite internet was increasingly becoming a part of the Chinese central government's core industrial policy. And so the G60 innovation corridor starts to look towards satellite internet. We're now in 2019, at a time when the Chinese Guowang mega constellation doesn't exist yet, even on paper, and China's two main space conglomerates, Kask and Kasich, are pushing forward their own separate plans for satellite internet, the in-house developed Hongyun and Hongyan constellations. But the G60 Innovation Corridor seems to pursue a third solution. It would invest in a Sino-German joint venture called ClioConnect. ClioConnect was founded in 2017, and through its German and Liechtenstein shareholders, ClioConnect controlled K-band spectrum rights, a precious asset for a constellation, especially since in this case, these prevailed over Starlinks. On the other side, the Chinese as investors would bring investment into Clio, and many of the investors included high-profile players of the G60 Innovation Corridor, notably Shanghai Alliance Investment and Shanghai Microsat, a branch of the Chinese Academy of Sciences specialized in building small satellites. So things begin to move. In November 2019, the first pair of satellites were launched on board a Kuaizhou 1A rocket from the Zhou Chuan Satellite Launch Center. These were small K-band communication test satellites called the Alpha A and Alpha B and manufactured by Shanghai Microsat. On August 4th, 2021, two additional larger experimental satellites named Songjiang and G60 launched on board along March 6th from the Taiyuan Satellite Launch Center. But as all of this was unfolding, relations started to get very tense between the Chinese and German shareholders of Clio, which, as a reminder, held a key to all this because of the frequency licenses. Disagreements rose on absolutely everything, spanning human resources, hardware sourcing, and more. 
and in 2021, things escalated. The Germans accused the Chinese investors related to the G16 initiative of stealing Clio Connect's frequency rights to use for a separate Chinese constellation, pointing out the fact that the Chinese satellites launched in August 2021 and related to G60 had nothing to do with Clio, but yet resembled very closely those that were sketched out in Clio's constellation plans in terms of frequencies and in terms of orbits. According to the Financial Times, the Germans were also infuriated by what was clearly for them a conflict of interest, with some people from the satellite manufacturer Shanghai Microsat being involved in both the Clio and the Chinese constellations. The Chinese side refuted these accusations, claiming that the 2021 launch had nothing to do with Clio. It was linked to a separate Chinese constellation. But despite this, in the end, and in a firestorm of cross lawsuits, the German part terminated the use of the licenses and, to the fury of the Chinese, sold them to a US company interested in building their own constellation, Rivada Space. This Sino-German and now American conflict continues to this day in courts around the world. So regardless, we're in late 2021. The G60 satellite internet project is losing its grip on the frequency licenses, but things continue to move forward. In November 2021, the G60 Innovation Corridor launched the construction of, quote unquote, the G60 Starlink Industrial Base, aka G60 Weixin Huilianwang China Jidi. This is a piece of land at the heart of the Songjiang district where were to be built a satellite telemetry control station, an operations center, and a satellite manufacturing plant. The factory was scheduled to be completed at the end of 2023, and as you can see here on Google Maps, construction is close to completion. The manufacturing capability is said to be at 300 satellites per year, and the first satellite is expected to roll out at the end of 2023. So with these new satellite capabilities, things are ripe for the G60 to start talking about an independent constellation that's made in Songjiang, if you will. As early as 2021, a piece on the Songjiang government's website mentioned a constellation to be deployed in three phases, with successively 72, 228, and 600 satellites. In February 2023, new articles on the Chinese internet start talking about 300 satellites and 1,000 satellites. And finally, to continue this upward trend, the constellation is now expected to have 1,296 satellites in a first phase and 12,000 satellites in the longer term, according to the most recent press conference by the Songjiang government in July. Now, the last missing piece of all of this is the spectrum licenses to legally operate this constellation. And while it's uncertain now which frequency licenses the G60 will use, space enthusiasts on the internet have spotted Chinese filings on the IT website from April 2023, corresponding exactly to the number of satellites of the G60 constellation. All in all, it's hard to know what to think of this G60 constellation. It may seem a bit redundant in comparison with perhaps the better established Guoan constellation, and it may also seem a little bold for the G60 to want to compete against the constellation with such deep-rooted central government backing. But then at the same time, so many details about the G60 are still blurry. It may be aiming for separate industry verticals and end users from Guoan. So really, time will tell. What's for sure, however, is that if this project really materializes, one area they'll receive a significant boost is the launch sector. Due to the very nature of G60, which is strongly connected to the local governments of the Yangtze River Delta, there's a good chance that the companies with geographic proximity with the G60 Innovation Corridor get priority access to G60 launch contracts in the future, such as Landspace, which is partially based in Huzhou, Deeplay Aerospace in Nantong, or Space Pioneer in Suzhou. In any case, no single launch company will capture all of the launches due to the sheer number of satellites. And just to finish, a quick mention on the fact that the channel has recently passed the 20,000 subscribers mark. So thank you so much to all of you for watching, for liking, for engaging in a discussion in the comments section and sharing our videos. And of course, a special mention to my supporters on Patreon and YouTube memberships. Let's continue to grow this channel and see where it goes. I'll see you in the next video.